Good morning. It's quarter past six on a Saturday morning and I'm just entering Glencoe. It's a beautiful morning. For today's video, I'm going to show the walk first. I will include the route description and the 3D flyover, but that'll be at the end of the video for a change. And you can jump straight to that using the chapters in the description below. I'm starting today's walk at the west end of the Unach Egach Ridge. And I'm going to walk down this way from this layby. The time is now 6.50 in the morning, Saturday morning. Most people do the ridge from the east to the west. And I've climbed it a couple of times that way. But I thought for a change I'd do it in the opposite direction and let people see what it's like going that way. We walk west until we get to the entrance that takes you down to the Clackaig pub and the Red Squirrel campsite. But just down the distance there, we'll turn right. When you see this junction, you're going to go to the right. Just where this car's coming out of. Then as soon as you come round that junction, around that bend, you'll see the sign here for no stopping. Before that, there's a very faint path. This path goes up here. And when I get to that bit just there in front of us, I'll point out the route to the top. From here, we follow the path that goes up the side of this gully all the way up to Skurnan Fiernan and that's the start of the Unach Egech Ridge and The most important thing today will be sunblock This stream we're walking up the side of is your last source of water. Once you're on the ridge there's nothing. The ridge as well can only be traversed west to east or east to west. It's too steep to go north or south off the ridge. So once you're on the ridge you either go to the end or you retrace your steps. It's quite a sharp, steep ascent to the top of Skurna Fierne. Unfortunately, this is the price of admission to one of the most spectacular ridges in Britain. Can't wait to get up there. You can kind of gauge how far up the mountain you are looking across there at Bidian. Lucky if we're a quarter of the way up. Total distance for today's walk is around about 12 kilometers with around 1200 meters of ascent. Once you're on the ridge, there's 440 meters of ascent going across the ridge, and the ridge itself is 3.5 kilometers long. I've just stopped to get some water. I'm going to have a good drink just now before I get up onto the ridge. This is only going to get less uh, abundant, if that's the right word for it. So, last little stop for water. Looking across at Bidian, and I'll try and hold this as level as possible, 
definitely see I'm making good progress. Still almost up to the bee life point I talked about earlier. Oh, across there in From here on up, it's going to get a bit more scree, a bit more loose rock. It's not too far to go, but it will get a bit tougher. having a rest. This is quite tough going, quite steep. I'm at 700 meters, the top is at 940, so 240 meters to go. I'm fairly sure this is the highest top on the ridge. The other end is about 900 meters. You can see some of the pinnacles there. So this is what you've got to look forward to, about 200 metres of scree. On the other side of that, you've also got this to look forward to. And Bidian is the one actually right in the middle there at the back, so you can see it on the ascent. I wasn't sure if it was blocked by that top there. So we're getting level with most of the ridge. Yeah, we're starting to get up there. You'll find that, like I mentioned earlier, most people park at the Three Sisters car park. And so it'll get quite busy early on. If you go further down the road, and there's my van. And it's all empty. If you're doing this with one vehicle, then you have to walk all the way back down that road, or if you do it in the opposite direction, all the way up the road. So you're just as well parking at this end. And then you don't have any trouble getting parked. Trying to keep to the edge of this scree, it's just a little bit easier to get up. And there's a nice gentle breeze, which is welcome in the sun. Not too far to go, we're on the ridge. And that's me just approaching the summit of Skur Nan Fairney. That's the most direct route to get up here. It's taken, oh, it's taken two hours and 10 minutes to get to the top. Now you can see the full ridge. So it's a nice easy walk up onto that top there and then down and it's right at those pinnacles there it starts to get a bit trickier but it should be nothing really difficult just one maneuver in those pinnacles and i'm pretty sure the last time i actually climbed around it on the way towards here and then back climbed down it because somebody was falling a bit further back so we'll see The number of Monroes and mountains you can see from here is just exceptional. Starting with Bidian and Nambian back there. 
Schoolhouse Ridge is just over there. Can't remember the name of the mineral. <laughs> Looks like there's an inversion even over there. The weather conditions are perfect. There's a little bit of high cloud, just very light, it's taking the sting out of the sun. Ben Nevis, and before that the Mamor Range. I don't think I've recorded any of them for the channel yet. We'll get there. And then the full Unich Anich Ridge. Looks like a booklet of beg. It's looking at Ben Nevis. As I've probably mentioned a few times, most people will come from the east and come along the ridge. So coming up this way, it's nice and quiet at this time in the morning. It's just gone nine o'clock. So now I'm going to leave the top, heading east along the ridge to Meow Jerig. At Meow Jerig, you need to scramble either way. And we'll see which way I think is easier. If you've never done this before, it can certainly be an intimidating sight. From a distance, you wonder how on earth you can climb through this without like being roped up and proper mountaineering. But there is a path. As long as you follow the scratch marks from the crampons, like I say, keep to the middle of it. I'm not saying we go over absolutely every single top, for the most part you do. When it comes to a tricker section, I will stop and actually video it so you can see what it's like. I would not do this if it was windy. I'd also not do it if it was cloudy. The biggest enjoyment of this is actually the views around you as you walk along the ridge. And, and in the wind, I think it's just too dangerous for me personally. I'd also not do it in the wet. Some of this rock can get very slippy in the wet. So I've always looked for the forecast to be, you know, 100% dry all day long when I've climbed the Unich Ega Ridge. Once I start on the actual pinnacles, the walking poles will be going away. There's always traffic noise here. It's the only thing. You're not quite in the remote wilderness that you are with some of the Munros. Skurna and Fierne. Obviously Ben Nevis. So starting to meet some people coming the other way. The first guy there, he set off at quarter to six. So it's taken about three hours to come the other way. So just going to go down here and then really start getting on the ridge proper. You can see there's a few guys ahead. 
and they're actually going the same way as me. can see a few people on the ridge now. Going in both directions. So there's a little peninsula that sticks out at this point. Let's you get to see a good view along the ridge on both sides. Give you a bit of an idea of the height. So from here, I'm going to go up there along, I'm going to put my poles away, and then you just go all the way up to that point up there. Just gone 10 o'clock, I stopped to have something to eat. This is the view from our lunch, early lunch. Now we're getting more people coming. There's a couple there, and then there's a group of three just behind them. So I'm going to set off shortly. There's a little bit of a down climb here, as you'll see these guys going up it. It's not too difficult, lots of hand holds, easy places to put your feet. Got a little bit of an uphill scramble here, lots of big holes, it's going to be really easy. Not difficult at all at this point. Sometimes you don't always go down the steepest point. So for here, we go around and you just go to keep to the right at this point. Next up, we go up there. It's not as hard as it looks. Just come from that little top there, down and up. And like I say, follow the scratch marks. There's lots of them. It's quite a direct scramble up here. But again, there's lots of holds. It's not difficult. It just looks a bit scary from a distance. Just coming to a wee top here. And remember, no shortcuts and no side tracks. You can see there's sort of wear down there. There's also wear over there, but you must keep to the middle. I'm not saying it's impossible to go around there, but you go over the top. It's the safest way. It also has the best views. No side tracks. I tried one of those side tracks one time. It scared the life out of me. It was much more difficult than just going over the top. And the, the rock was a very loose. I would say it's more dangerous. Can't be sure that they're not all unsafe, but I wouldn't risk it.
So I think this is probably the trickiest part coming along here. So we just got to down climb here, walk along, go round that boulder there, and then along and up and down. So you can see there is a big drop there and you can see where people have tried to cut round here I wouldn't do it As long as you focus on where you're putting your feet, your hands Make sure you've got three points of contact before you move something Or always have three points of contact Climbing down is easier done backwards Sometimes a bit tricky to see where to put your feet. And I was at the side.
definitely a bit scary that bit and I'm fairly sure that is a crux it's that boulder right there as you climb around that it seems like there's nowhere to go but that is that's definitely the hardest part now you'll see there's a path down the side I tried to go along that it was even more treacherous so I wouldn't do it but after that it's all easy from here back you can never get complacent or careless at this ridge even when we've done the hardest part there are still big drops and narrow bits to cross over Just looking back along that section, the most difficult section of the ridge. That was a steep little bit to come up. Oh, I need to get more fitness. That was my one exception that proves the rule. There is one little bit there you can come around instead of climbing up what is the right hand side here. But the rule is go over the top. Sadly, coming to the end of the pinnacles, Mial Jerig is up ahead. Just one more obstacle to get over. And I think there's a bit of a down climb on the other side of that, a bit of a chimney to climb down. But other than that, it's just a walk. There's, sorry, there's one more scrambling section once you get past Mial Jerig. But that'll be up, scrambling uphill instead of down climbing as you normally do from the other side. There was a little bit of a breeze a moment ago, but it's all gone. Thankfully, there's a bit of high cloud. So we're in a little bit of light shade because it is a warm one today. Almost at the summit of Mial Jerig, the second of the two Monroes. There's a slight little bit to climb down just there, centre of the screen, you can't see it from here. You don't have to climb the ridge if you want to do these two Monroes. You can do Mial Jerig from the Three Sisters car park and then just return the same way you came. And as I showed at the beginning, you can go up the other Monroe quite easily from the other side. There's a little path that goes there to the left, but I'm going to go down here. So it's down to the right at this point. A slightly tricky down climb, but there's plenty of holds. And sometimes you just need to move your hand down, maybe six inches or your foot down six inches in one place. It gives you access to another hold. So it wasn't difficult. It's a real shame you have to go back down.
approaching the summit of Mial Jerig. What busier than the first one? There's still a little bit to go on the ridge until we go down, you can see people. So that top over there is the last top. You can probably make out there's a couple of people on top of that. Then from there it goes all the way back down to the Three Sisters car park. Last uphill climb from here, it looks a bit steep. Oh, let's see how that is. This is the final scrambling section on the ridge and if you're doing it in the opposite direction, this is a tricky part to down climb. There are lots of big holes, so if you take your time, you can make it down and it's not too bad but when you're looking down it does look a bit intimidating because you can't see clearly where to put your hands and feet so just take your time looking at it from here you go round to the right a little bit and then cut across and up to the left up behind that white rock there That was another steep little section to climb up. Again, there are a lot of holes and just follow all the scratches on the rock and you'll be in the right place. When you see this little cairn, this is the end of the ridge. Where all these people are coming up is where we want to go down. So I'm going to go straight ahead to that next little cairn and then down to the left. So I've stopped to get my poles out. Here's this fork in the path we want to keep to the right and go over to that cairn. One final view of the ridge before going down. So that was three and a half kilometres that walk. Should be quite a quick descent, there's a good path back to the Three Sisters car park. So we're going to head down here, straight ahead, you can see the path sort of zigzags around. It's going to get quite steep in the descent. Some bits are a little bit loose, but it's a lot better path than the one I came up. So 
So what is my verdict on the east to west, west to east debate for the Unich Eger Ridge? I think it's easier going west to east, to be honest. The down climbing is easier than the down climbing going from the east to the west. There is the same crux and it looks intimidating both ways. I found it scarier the first time when I hadn't been around it and I didn't know what was beyond it. Coming down, you can see what is beyond it, although it still looks quite scary because they're very thin pinnacles. But I think overall going this way is the easier way to do it actually. I've still got a bit to climb down on the path, but there is a better constructed path at this side. A refreshing breeze. If I look across there, it looks like I'm about halfway down. But when you look down at the cars, they look a lot closer. Maybe it's just me. This path's okay, a little bit rocky, not too loose. Just working my way down. It's 1.20 in the afternoon, feels like the sun's been dialed up to full maximum temperature. Occasionally getting a slight breeze, it's scorching today. I've been topping up with my sunblock so hopefully I don't get burnt, but I am hot. So I'm just about to come down to the car park for the Una Ega Ridge. There's also the Three Sisters car park next to it on the opposite side of the road. From there, or from, from either car park, it's basically about three and a half kilometers back down to where the van is. I didn't bring my bike. I didn't think it was far enough to warrant it. I wouldn't want to cycle back on the bike because this road, you can see how much traffic's been on it all day. And that wouldn't be much fun. I could have done it in the morning. I could have parked the van at this end and coasted down on the bike to the other end. Uh, I thought for three and a half kilometres, I can just walk that. It is a long 12 kilometres this walk. All that intricate work to climb up and down the pinnacles. It's very slow and methodical placing your toes and getting your foot right and your hands right and making sure your hand holes are secure. So it, it's, not as, it's not just a stroll in the park. It's very enjoyable. It takes a bit more out of you than a normal 12k walk. There's a little split in the path here. We're going to go to the right. If you need some water in a hurry, there is a stream just there, so you could go down there and refill. Rather than go along to the Three Sisters car park over there, it's a bit difficult to get round. There's a narrow pass where the road goes through right in the centre of the screen and you don't have much space with the traffic. So I'm going to cross the road and where that speeding sign is, I'm just going to head down there because I want to join the wide path that goes all the way down. And you walk down that until eventually it joins the main road where that farm is down there. And then there's another road, another side of the road sort of path you can take off the main road and that takes you back to the car park. Join this road, a gravel 
track. I turned right and we're going to stay on the main gravel track now until it finishes up. There's a little farm down the way. This will take us most of the way down to the car park where the van is. Probably one last panorama, the view from the bottom. And this is looking up the Three Sisters. And the Lost Valley is up that one. The OS map's automatic route that it plotted was to go up and there's a little disused road behind this Volvo. But I can see there's also, there is a road, a, a trail along the other side. So I'm probably just going to go back down and follow that trail. So where I went underneath that little underpath, you don't need to go down through there. I did that to avoid having to cross this road. It's been pretty busy, <laughs> quiet right now, but it's been busy. And I was going to go up the opposite side. I think I'll just go along here. This looks pretty good. Saves me a bit of a detour. So that's the end of the walk and back at the lay-by where I parked up this morning. So now I'll go over to the 2D map on OS Maps and the 3D flyover. And again, the OS Maps is in the description below so you can click on the link and it'll take you to the route, which you can print off for yourself or use with the app. The total distance for today's walk is 11.6 kilometers. Estimated time is meant to be around five hours and there is a total ascent of 1,320 metres. The start of the walk is in Glencoe and it's around two hours drive from Glasgow. The Unach Egach Ridge Walk actually has four car parks and I'll show them in the satellite imagery. So the first car park is at the east end You've then got a second car park just slightly further down and actually there's another one next to that and as you go down to the other end of Glencoe there's a lay-by and this is where I chose to start the walk and there's even a fifth car park down here at the very end so any of these car parks will be suitable for the walk it does not matter which car park you use the walk will be the same distance because the, the route that we take passes by all of these car parks. So in this instance I'm starting at the lay-by and from that lay-by you head west following the road and I just walked along the edge of the road there is actually a path a trail on the opposite side but it was early in the morning so there wasn't much traffic. You take the first junction which takes you down to the pub and from there, just immediately, you'll turn up onto the mountain. And you follow the path, it's a clear path. Follow that up. It continues to rise. And you keep going up there. You will see there are some slight streams on the map, so you can fill up with water. I think I filled up about here. It was a very dry day, so I didn't want to risk going too high and finding that the, the stream had dried up. Once you get up to around about here, it starts to get a little bit scree and the rock uh, underfoot is a little bit loose. It's not too bad. 
you just make your way up. So you'll get to the top of Skurna and Fierney quite quickly. And it's a broad flat top and it's got some amazing views, you can, especially when you're looking out to the west. From here you're going to start on the Unach Egach Ridge. The start at this, from this end is very easy. It's a gentle walk along, it goes down a little bit and up a little bit. It's actually quite difficult using the map and even with a satellite image to actually explain where it changes from being a reasonably easy walk to gets much more tricky. I think you're going down here for a bit and it goes along and it comes up to another peak. If we check on the premium, yeah so there's a high point here and that walk is easy. And then once you come down from that high point it starts to get, you get down to a low point and then it starts to get a little bit trickier and there is some significant scrambling. You're scrambling up the way and you're climbing along and then the ridge gets narrower and yeah it's probably around about here which is the narrowest point on the ridge and these are the very fine pinnacles. There are signs that some people have tried to go around the side and I did try that before and I'll probably explain in the video that I found that very loose and for me that was quite dangerous. The way to do the ridge is to stay on the very centre of the ridge and you'll see the scrapes on the rock with people have been climbing in the winter with their crampons and that's usually a good sign. But keep to the, the main centre of the ridge, even though it's very narrow, there's always a way to climb up or climb down when you're going along the main part of the ridge. There's a couple of exceptions one point you can scramble up it and over but you can actually just walk round and you'll see that in the video. And there's another point if you were to stay right in the main ridge you would miss the path that goes slightly to the right and I'll show that as well. But for the most part you stay on the main ridge. And climbing down at this point is the trickiest part. For me that was the trickiest part. You're climbing down and you've got to climb down and then along to the side and there's no bottom. If you keep going down, if you came off, you would, there would be a fall. One thing to be very careful of is the ridge is nice and firm and easy to climb along and scramble on in the dry. But from what I've read, the rock gets very slippery in the wet. And I recently slipped on some rock on Sleoch that was dry when I walked over it in the morning and when I walked over it in the afternoon on the way back it was wet and it was like walking on ice and I fell. So you've got to be very careful, you know, depending on the weather conditions. So you keep going along the ridge. There are more ups and downs and there's a bit of down climbing before you come to Mialderg. And you down climb, and I think it's right about here. And that's a little bit of a tricky down climb, but it's not too bad. I would say that this ridge is easier than climbing up Curve Ridge. The technical climbing of it is, is slightly easier but there are parts that are more exposed and I would not want to climb it in, the, in a strong windy day. It's also a long and sustained ridge walk or in scramble so you can't easily come off at any point you can either come off at the start or come off at the end but you've got to do the full ridge and the full ridge is three and a half kilometers long so you have to keep that in mind. So when you get to the top of Mial Jerig, it's quite a flat top as well, and this one's usually the more the busier of the two. Uh, follow the path; it's quite easy and obvious. And then there's one final climb, and I think it's right about here. And if you're doing it from east to west, this is probably the trickiest down climbing section when you're climbing down here. But there are lots of big handholds; you just have to take your time. Just make sure you've got secure hand and footholds and it's not too bad. You climb up and get over this top here and then from there it's going down. There's a bit of scree on this path but it's not a bad path and it's quite well defined. And there are little bits you've got to slightly scramble down when you're going down here as you make your way down. 
and the, the path gets better as you get near the bottom but it's all clear all the way down it does split here so you just got to be careful it does go down towards this way so you want to keep to the right as you're coming down and then there's a little car park here from that car park you walk along I cross the road here and there is a trail that goes down where people have walked down to this path here. It's easier and safer than walking along the side of the road here. There's a bad bend, there's rocks, it's quite narrow, there's not much space for pedestrians. So it's much safer I think to cross the roads before that and then down onto this path. And then you follow the path, it takes you all the way along, it takes you all the way along here. In the video I went underneath the road, there was like an underpath. It's meant for a stream, but you can go through it. You don't need to do that. I didn't, it wasn't clear to me that there was still a path going all the way along the side here. And there is a path, let's go back to the standard map. So there is a path, it goes all the way along the side, a walker's path, and takes you right back. And then you just cross over back to your car if you parked here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And here's a sneak preview of next week's walk. And bye for now.